semua, selamat malam saya Ibrahim Muhammad Amin. Uh, welcome, ni macam dekat betul saya dengan korang ya. Woo! Okay guys, welcome to uh, to uh, the viewers tuning in. My name is Ibrahim Muhammad Amin and I will be your host for uh, you guys tonight. Okay, and today special sharing session by Dr. Onkal on topic of the art of making Babies, Ooh, very interesting topic. Without further ado, I would like to invite the guest for today, uh, which is Dr. Navdeep Singh Panu, fertility specialist. Hello, doctor. Hi, hello, hi, good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk today. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, good. How are you? No, oh, I'm good too. Okay, doctor, thank you for taking the time off your busy schedule to share some sure. of your experience with us today. Um, yes, of course, during this pandemic, how is your, you know, your um, daily routine nowadays, doctor? Yeah. Well, daily routine, uh, it's uh, it's quite all right, not too bad. Um, going to work is uh, very nice because uh, there's actually not much of traffic. You know, yeah. so you don't get stuck in traffic jam very much, but mm -hmm. but it's also not very nice to see that a lot of people are, are not working and uh, you know they they can't uh, do what they usually do, so it's um, not a very happy thing. You know, I really yeah. hope that this pandemic uh, settles down as soon as it can, so everybody can go about doing their work and you know their own lives. So I think that's more important. But I'm sure there yeah. is no problem. Uh, for those uh, for yang nak buat baby, ah, ha, itu tadi kita mesti yes, topik hari yes, ni. No yes, problem, kan? yes, <laughs> yes. Because they got more time to uh, to spend, spend. They got more time to spend to try to make babies now. Yes, that's true. Okay, we have a lot of comments here. Uh, everyone Tell me. Saying, hello, doctor. Hello, doctor Nabi. Hi, 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 hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, hi sure. to you all. So Dr. Navdeep, I think uh, this uh, today's topic is really really interesting. There, uh, if you guys nak tanya apa apa soalan, if you guys have any questions, do ask uh, below, and we will try to answer ataupun doctor book akan cuba answer if kita ada lebih masa. Okay, alright guys, uh, I want to start now um, about the stigma and also myths. Okay, myth number one. Damn. Relax. Infertility right. is a medical condition. Your physical reproductive health can't be fixed. Just positive thinking, a refreshing vacation, or a new mindset. What do you think about this, doctor? Yes. No. See, a lot of people will tell new couples, you know, tapu lah, relax, take your time. It will happen. It will eventually happen. And then satu tahun, dua tahun, and then still nothing happening. So, of course, you must have a positive mindset, positive thinking, you know, that something will happen, that eventually you'll get pregnant. But then again, after about six months of trying, you know, then it's probably the time when you need to go and see a doctor. You know, because relaxing too, it's relaxing is a, is a treatment too, okay? You, don't, you can't, you definitely cannot have too much of sex when, when you have, uh, when you're stressed out, all right? Yeah. So, uh, so yes, relax is good, but after six months of trying, or maybe 12 months max, you give yourself, you see nothing's happening then, it's better to see a doctor. Because then the doctor will do a scan, check certain things, then you know, to give a proper treatment just to help you with the problem. Yeah? There you go. So, maksudnya kat sini macam, usually, when I remember when I got married, we were like, everyone was like, okay, it's time to make babies. <laughs> and I think every newly couple, newly wet couple will be like, oh, relax, we'll take time and whatnot, okay? So if you guys are more other like that, those kind of, you know, experience, okay, maybe you guys can share and share with us what happened when you relax, uh, relax, what happened? Is it like datang tiba-tiba, tiba-tiba pregnant, ataupun uh, everything goes into, you know, according to your schedule, your plans. Uh, okay, please share you guys in kalau korang mahu, okay? Alright, myth, uh, myth number two. Try harder. There's a lot more <laughs> to fertility than the actual sex part. Yes. Effort alone yes. doesn't always translate to success, doctor. Couples 
shouldn't have to feel like they're not already doing their best. What do you think about this, Dr? Yes, of course, because you see, um, well, sex is something which is not homework. You know, so a lot of people will tell people, I mean, uh, young couples, try harder lah, cuba lagi, you know, do this, ambil ni, ambil tu, you know, take this medicine, you know, you know, uh, go back home every day, you must do. So, end of the day, <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, it, sex becomes, uh, intercourse becomes uh, homework. So, we mm. all hated homework in school, remember? <laughs> so, yeah. when something becomes homework, then it's not, uh, it won't be very, it won't be fun anymore, you see? So, um, at least if you want to have intercourse, you have to space it out. Maybe once in three days, maybe alternate day, two, three times a week. That's okay, you know. Tapi hurry, hurry, and you know, um, and uh, trying harder to you tell couple to try harder is. I'm not sure what harder actually means. You know, is it more frequently, <laughs> different positions? I don't know. <laughs> you know, but uh, yes. So end of the day, it's not about trying harder. These people are already stressed out. You know, they can't conceive. So it's uh, it's probably it's better to uh, to let them you know get checked. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, when was when when will be the right? Um, kata, okay, maksudnya doktor cakap kalau dah setahun tak boleh pregnant means baru check or within that year you can just try and then if tak, yelah macam kalau tak pregnant juga within one year you you have to check lah doktor ya. Yeah? Yes, of course. Of course, like, you know, when we, when we talk about checking, some people already know, for example, some ladies, they already got some good, already uh, some painful, in, uh, you know, periods. Then those things, then they already got a swelling in the tummy, you know, then they know that, look, they have a problem. So, very get it checked. And some men also, mm-hmm. they have a problem, problem with, uh, you know, with uh, having intercourse or, you know, like uh, premature ejaculation where, where they are unable to control ejaculation or or you know erectile dysfunction so when you have those problems then it's probably you need to go and check at the earlier stage not when it's so late and you already stress yourself out so within six months to 12 months six to 12 months it's just nice for you to go and get checked because remember the earlier it is the better the outcome because the younger you are the higher chances for you to get you know, proper treatment and not expensive treatment because when you're older, then things get very difficult. You know, then the rawatan also will start getting a bit more expensive, the treatment options like IVF and all. So, younger you are, the better it is. And faster have as many babies as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, myth number three, doctor. Woman's issue. Women are often the target of pregnancy topics, but it takes two to make a baby. Betul tak, doctor? So, it fertility yes. affects men and women equally. Ah, uh, Macam ni, apa pendapat doctor pula? Okay, you see, when you see the percentage of people who have fertility problems, okay, it's basically 50-50, alright? Overall, 30% is women problem, 30% men problem, 30% both have problems. 10 percent mm-hmm. we don't know why they cannot get pregnant so that's why for those patients then you need to do additional tests or you know a, a more more advanced kind of a, what they call that treatment so you look at it is both needs to be checked a lot of times you get the lady coming in the wife coming in no sign not check they say where's your husband oh my husband uh, he says he's not, not his problem he's okay he's healthy you know the problem with him you know, but then you'll be surprised when you eventually you check the wife, he's perfectly normal. Then you're calling the husband, you know, you have to pujo, some people need to pujo them a little bit. You need to call them and say, look, you know, come along, you know, you want a baby, you got to go to check. So then they give their sperm test or they get checked and then, oh my God, you find that they have a problem. Like, you know, lack of sperm, not very healthy sperm. So in that scenario, you must understand, you know, it takes two, husband and wife to make a baby, not one person, you see. So, end of the day, both need to be checked. And you'd be surprised nowadays, the number of men who have fertility issues, like poor sperm count, there are many reasons why men have that nowadays. The most important thing is smoking. The smoking is the one which which uh, which makes your body, your body unhealthy. And when you're unhealthy, your sperm also becomes unhealthy. Then, how are you going to make a baby, you see? Yes, then I got, I got some men... I got some men that could tell me, you know, uh, you know, doctor, kawan saya, dia, dia rokok, you know, 
dua kotak satu hari mm-hmm. tapi ada 10 baby, 10 anak. You know, but I must understand everybody's body reacts differently to everything. Medication, toxins, and cigarette smoking. So some men, one one pack of one or two cigarettes too, they get very unhealthy, right? So most importantly, it's staying healthy and you know, and it's not only the woman's problem. Of course, it's 50-50. Right. right. It, uh, it seems to if women yang smoking juga doctor kan? Oh yes, yes. In women who smoke, there are a lot of other problems. It's just like they they unhealthy too. So um, yeah. number of eggs that they have compared to their the other colleagues in the same age is a bit lesser. It's, the test mm-hmm. is known as the anti-mullerian hormone. If we do this blood test, we can realize, realize that they have a bit lesser eggs, and um, mm-hmm. and of course they have other medical problems. You know, eventually when they are pregnant, you know, the baby doesn't grow well, the placenta, the uri doesn't grow well. So, end of the day, because uh, cigarette smoking, there's no vitamins in there, you see. So, when there's no vitamin, tak payah lah. Ah, another, another thing I always forget to mention. Vaping. A lot of people vaping. feel that vaping. Ah, vaping. A lot of people feel that, uh, that uh, vaping is a healthy alternative. Not at mm-hmm. all. It's still just uh, tipu diri sendiri, you know. It's just lying to yourself that, uh, that, that you know, I'm not smoking, so I'm healthy, I'm vaping. I said, no, no, no. Right. All these things are chemicals which you bring into your body. And vaping too has no vitamin inside. Unless you can convince the companies to put vitamins inside, <laughs> and then unhealthy. So, end of the day, vaping, smoking, sama saja. It's going to make your body unhealthy, then you'll have problems eventually. Yeah. So, if you guys mungkin planning to have babies, you know, with your partner, uh, tak kisahlah ya, lelaki ataupun uh, wanita, together, kena sama-sama help each other yeah. lah, kan, if you guys are smoking. But usaha so, sama-sama. Baby, stop, kan, uh, doctor, kan, stop for a while. Stop terus lah, kalau boleh. And then, stop you know, uh, yeah. kan, doctor. Okay. But now because eventually you've got to spend your money on you got to spend your money on the baby's milk, baby's diaper. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> banyak lagi kena spend tak pada baby, ya guys? Banyak lagi kena spend dengan baby. Yeah. So, you you stop the cigarette Betul. smoking, much better lah. can save some money. <laughs> betul. Okay, doctor. Uh, I don't know about other countries, tapi betul ke kalau dekat Malaysia, uh, people lagi putting or dorang suka put uh, blames dekat wanita yang tak boleh pregnant. Is it because lelaki punya ego, they're like, oh no, it's your problem, it's not mine. Is it true? Or is it a cultural thing? Or well, I think it's not only in Malaysia, not only in Asia, it's throughout the world. See, because, uh, well, I think it's lack of education or maybe lack of understanding about the fertility issues, you know, and uh, and everyone feels it's, it's uh, you know, the woman is the one who carries the baby, you know, the woman is the one which, which it needs to see a doctor first. So a lot of people feel that you know assume that maybe most likely it's a woman problem, but uh, but honestly um, you know the good thing recently what we're seeing is a lot of men have uh, accepted it like look we all have to come together. So the good thing nowadays a lot of couples they are walking the clinic together, you know hand in hand they come in and uh, and they both get tested simultaneously you know together they get tested and that's a fantastic thing you know end of the day those kind of couples eventually you know um you you, you can find out their their problems what are their yeah. issues why they're able to conceive faster compared to the ones which you know are denial they don't want to come well it may be an ego issue too okay but i feel it's more of a lack of understanding so once you explain to a person then you should be fine you know all right, kita ada question. Okay, we're gonna, you know, uh, go in with the question and then... Um, okay, no uh, other okay, so this one is from Lingi23. Dia kata, dia tanya, Does drinking alcohol is making female has lesser eggs? Okay, um, alcohol does not reduce your eggs. Okay, it, it does not reduce your sperms too. Um, if you drink once in a while, social drinking, a little bit here and there, it's fine. It's okay. Okay, anything in moderation is fine. But uh, a lot of people who cannot control, for example, binge drinking. Uh, now, mabuk sampai golek here, don't fall down here, fall down there. Every day you drink, you know, on a daily basis. 
uh, then eventually you have some liver problems, you have health issues, hypertension, diabetes, and all sorts of things you can uh, then eventually that will, will make you have difficulty in conceiving. And men too, if too much of alcohol, you eventually have erectile dysfunctions and lots of other issues. You know, so end of the day, you know, it's uh, anything in moderation is fine. Uh, now, when I say ending in moderation, jalan salah faham. Okay, it's not. It does not include your vaping and your el- and your smoking. Uh, that one totally zero. Tak boleh. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, A lot of people feel that, that, you know, that. A lot of people okay. feel that alcohol, so, like uh, coffee, too, is a uh, is a bad thing. Not really. Coffee. Coffee is like moderation. It's still fine. Don't overdo anything. That's the advice. Okay, now guys, kita akan teruskan lagi dengan myth kita yang keempat, boleh? Okay, myth keempat adalah age. Like female doctor, like female infertility and male infertility rates increase with age, says Dr. Thomas Price, an infertility specialist at Duke Fertility Center. Dia kata, after the age of 40, a man is likely to start experiencing decreases in semen volume and motility. What do you think about this, doctor? Yes, of course. Age is a very, very important factor. Must understand as you get older and older, all your bodily functions, you know, your overall health start to deteriorate. Okay, and includes your reproductive function. Okay, in women, yes, age does affect because you lose your best eggs you lose a lot of eggs when you're younger all right and once mm-hmm. you're older already eventually you know you reach menopause put to side right okay and mm-hmm. as for and that's why men always think that it's and men always feel that you know um, i have sperms coming out i have sperms being produced every day till i'm 60 years old so it's probably not a problem wrong that's another myth okay men after age of 40 even your sperm count starts to reduce in yeah, and your quality Quality means the normal form, known as morphology, normal shape. That starts to reduce. Motility is the sperm movement. That just starts to reduce. So eventually, once you get older and older, your, your, your sperm concentration and your quality reduces. So that will be another problem why you're unable to, you know, get a baby, a child. So that's why mm-hmm. earlier the better. Cepat cepat kawin, cepat cepat dapat baby. <laughs> when you're healthy and you're young and healthy. You know, yeah. so so, but but saying saying that there there are a lot of reasons why your sperm count can be reduced. As I said, health mm-hmm. mainly. But you don't worry. Even if you're a smoker or you know been drinking alcohol a lot or very unhealthy, sperm count can be improved. Okay, for example, they can give you multivitamins. You know, all these antioxidants mm-hmm. will improve your oral health. Okay, so. Don't worry about your sperm count. You can get it improved, but you need to stop all the bad habits first. That's okay. All right. That is what I need about the chick pupoy. They got the doctor. If both husband and wife berat badan dah overweight, boleh ganggu kesuburan ke doctor? Oh yes, boleh ganggu because kalau they call it body mass index. Kalau body mass mass index lebih tiga puluh then um you know your your hormonal profile because fat fat in our body will cause your hormonal profile to be imbalanced so a lot of women you see when they are big with the oversized what happens to their menstrual cycle their period very irregular right so right. women or men who are big size they have hormonal imbalances number two men who are big size too they'll have lots of other issues for example you know um, erectile dysfunction Okay, then the, the sperm count is reduced. So, health issues when you're obese is a lot. So, it's always very important to reduce weight. And how do you reduce weight? Number one, stop the sugar. All the refined sugar, all the sugar which is uh, sorry, all the sugar which is mixed in your coffee, your tea. That you have to stop because sugar is one thing which in- increases your body size tremendously. The moment you stop with sugar, then cut down the carbs like rice i know we malaysians we love we asians rather we love eating our rice kalau tak makan nasi opening i agree with you but we have to re- reduce yeah reduce the reduce the amount of rice you know like they always say suku suku sparo a quarter quarter half a quarter rice you know quarter meat and half vegetables okay and that way you 
definitely reduce weight and not forgetting exercise you know i'm not saying that go and join a gym or you know start start buying uh, you know weights and start uh, you know exercising a lot every single day no don't have to maybe half an hour every alternate day maybe two or three times a week you go is enough you know that you end up losing weight you get, get more healthy okay so like uh, if you if you end up losing weight you will find that your you know your your sex life will definitely improve tremendously yeah you feel better yeah. right doctor and you feel oh, yes. healthier you feel better you feel more confident right and even in men uh, in men if you sleep well if you exercise okay your your natural testosterone starts to rise and then of course that will improve your overall sperm count and your you know and your performance <laughs> Nanti I have to ajak my husband lah dengar conversation atau uh, kita main perbualan. Yeah, kena apa. kena ex- <laughs> exercise. Huh? Oh, kena exercise. So husband and wife exercise lah. Ha, okay, sama-sama yes. exercise. Kita tengok, you know, and YouTube ke, you know, oh, by yes. jump ropes, copy, you know, whatever kind yes. of activity you can do with your family. Just do it from home. Tak ada masalah. You can you All can right, go uh, you can go on YouTube and uh, check something called like high intensity interval training. Hit. Uh, hit that's hit. the best thing you do. Just 15 minutes. Habis. Settle. Dah dah letih dah. Okay. Um there's a question from Adam Khan Wall. Dia kata doktor, does supplement affect our fertility too? Oh yes. The right supplements does help. For example, um in men um, or women too vitamin a c e zinc fish oils all these things contain antioxidants so with all the stress that we face every day taking these multivitamins will definitely improve your overall health because the most importantly when you when your health improves then eventually your sperms and eggs and your fertility potential start to increase too okay so other supplements are like we'll take is like coq10 No, or, or be complex. All these things do definitely improve your overall health. You know, um, and uh, but of course, uh, don't overdo. Don't don't overtake. Don't don't uh, want to overdose yourself with a lot of multivitamins. Just take the regular ones from the from the from the from the pharmacies, and that be the ph- pharmacy that be good enough. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So move on now to myth number five about fertility okay. after. First child, even if a and couple already has a child or children, they can experience difficulty in getting pregnant later. This is called secondary infertility. What do you think about this, Pladatha? See, the thing is, is that uh, a lot of people feel that after a first child, you know, uh, we won't have any problems getting a second child. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, let's wait for a few years and then we see how. But they don't understand. As you get older and older. Remember, we spoke about men have age, mm-hmm. and men and women both have age-related problems, and that will reduce your fertility potential. Secondly, um, as you get older, over, over time, you may have got some form of infection, you know, which which disrupted your fallopian tubes. Your fallopian tubes may have been blocked for some reason or another. You know, uh, men will like, get infections like something sort of prostatitis, okay, and uh, all that too will start to affect. And uh, not forgetting too, lifestyle changes. As you get older and older, you you start to you know take on the bad habits like smoking and lots of drinking and putting on a lot of weight. And as as I, as I spoke as we spoke about it just now, weight you know being overweight will you know disrupt your hormonal profile. And when that happens, right. you'll eventually you'll be uh, having more difficulty to have your second child. So secondary infertility is something which. Uh, If after, you know, a lot of couples try to have the second child after about you know two years, and from the time you start till you know six six months to one year, if you do not conceive, then it's better to get checked because not necessarily right. you, you don't have a problem. You may have a problem. It needs to be surgically operated. For example, fibroids or even ovarian cysts. As you, that that's what you get as you get old and older. Okay, so uh, by by doing an early checkup. Then you you will uh, treat your problems as fast as possible, and you get your child as soon as you can. Okay. So, so now, doctor, 
We actually have a few question lagi ni. Uh, this is from Amina KL. Uh -huh. Dia kata, if we are ongoing fertility treatment, we are ongoing fertility treatment, can we go to vaccination? Can we take our vaccine? Yes, vaccinations. Okay, firstly, vaccinations are must. Everybody must take the vaccine. And all the vaccines are all approved and recommended by government already. Okay, now as for fertility, so if you haven't started, then I generally advise my patients to complete both the doses and then after the second dose, then, then see me, uh, you know, immediately. Because then you start the, you know, assessments and the treatments and injections and all. So after about a month later, they, you know, um, they should be all ready to get pregnant. Okay, and as for some patients where they have taken their first dose, and tiba tiba they got pregnant before the second dose fine that's not a problem then some um, you can uh, some some according to some recommendation you can take the injections as your at the, at the, your usual time or some will prefer to delay till your 14 weeks so the best uh, for for women to get the vaccine if they are I mean pregnant women 14 to 33 weeks that's the recommended okay. time but then again, as I said, there's not an absolute, um, you know, uh, what they call that, contraindication to take the vaccine early part of pregnancy. All right. So you have to discuss with your doctor and see how it is. So if you are you're coming back to your question, that if you are in fertility treat, having fertility treatment, um, can I take the vaccine? I would say, well, probably just wait till you finish your, um, your 14 weeks. And then yeah. at the 14 weeks, then go for your vaccination. But if you haven't started, then complete your vaccination first, and then go and get the uh, start start making babies. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. This one is from Alia uh, Yusuf. She asks, Doctor, for single women under Malaysian law, can we freeze our eggs, Doctor? Okay. Well, number one, um, fertility treatment is generally given uh, done for married couples. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yes, um, single women can freeze store their eggs for future use that's mm. not a problem there's no rule or law stating that you can't okay mm. so uh, because that is actually one um, uh, type of fertility treatment where we call it preserving your fertility so then you know some women they they they, they can't they they prefer to uh, focus on their career first you know they want to reach a certain level in their life before they they start you know make, uh, to make babies so uh, or they haven't found Mr. Right yet, yeah. and uh, so Mr. Mr. Right is uh, still not not in view yet. Then, <laughs> then it's always better to but preserve PKP. your fertility. Huh? Uh, PKP so now it's even cool. worse. Yeah. Yeah. So everything's on internet, and the internet <laughs> you don't know which is true, which is not. <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay. So oh. yes, uh, freeze egg freezing is something which. Uh, which young women who are not planning to uh, to get married or conceive soon, yes, it's, that's something which is recommended. Okay, as early the earlier the better. It's like like uh, lower if your age is uh, you know lower than uh, thirty five years of age, and that's a fantastic time to put your eggs for future use. All right. So your yeah. risk. Of everyone, everyone, everyone is worried about you know like Down syndrome. Or yeah. a baby yang terancakal or some problem like that. You know when you get yeah. older, it's forty and above. But if you were to collect your eggs when you are thirty plus, mm. those eggs will uh, carry a lower risk for you to get all the Down syndrome and all, which is age related. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next myth, uh, myth number six: health has no impact. In reality, one of the largest factors of fertility men and down to health what do you think about this Bula? oh yes health is very important as, I, as i've been talking about it overall yeah. health your general health is very important for you to have a good potential if you are healthy your sperms your eggs are healthy and for a woman if she is healthy the baby is also healthy mm. right so health it can range from thyroid problems diabetes hypertension heart diseases okay all these things will affect fertility other things will be like um, like you know when men will have a thing called a varicocele varicocele mm -hmm. is swelling of blood vessels around their testes all right okay. those things will also cause uh, reduction in sperm count 
So it's very, very important to go for an annual body checkup. Just a normal routine check or blood test, go walk into a lab or walk into a clinic to ask a doctor to do a general assessment to make sure you are fine and well. That's very, very important to ensure that uh, that uh, that you don't that you don't have any medical illnesses. And if you do, treat it early, and your chances of getting multi many many babies will be very good. <laughs> Right. Okay, doctor. Um, there are many, many raised problems or questions on why this is happening. Let's start with the first problem. Okay, married twelve months and having unprotected intercourse. Yes, so you married for for twelve months, and you know you're having unprotected intercourse. That means you've been basically trying. And um, that's, that's one reason why you should see a doctor. That means there's definitely something wrong already somewhere. Either the sperm count is poor or um, the fallopian tubes are blocked or, or, mm. or the lady has something called like uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. <clears throat> so after 12 months of trying and still unable to conceive, go and get checked. Just to just see a doctor for an ultrasound scan, check your fallopian tubes, do a sperm test and blood test for hormonal problems. Okay, then you will find out why, what, and what's going on. What, what's the problem? Alright. Okay, the next one. Trying more than twelve months. More than twelve months already. If you've been trying and trying and trying, and now you've already got, uh, you know, one year, two years, three years. If it's not working, means then, it says something is definitely wrong already. So it's time for you to go and get checked, lah. So I always I usually advise couples at least between six to twelve months. Jangan tunggu lama lama nanti lebih susah. Okay. So the next one, uh, what are the causes for men? Which at least many doctor dah cakap dah, tapi boleh lah doctor ulang sekali lagi boleh ringkas. Ulang sekali. <laughs> boleh. See, men men there are a lot of factors. There are two main there are two main issues in men. One is your lack of sperm quality, and secondly is your um, uh, sexual problem, for example, erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. So erectile dysfunction is more related to general health, okay? Where uh, or some medication that they've been taking, um, depression, um, hypertension, all these things too can cause erectile dysfunction. And uh, when when you have that, then there's definitely some you are unable to have intercourse totally. All right, so there's treatment for you, um, which you can give. Things like Viagra or Cialis, these are the main uh, type of treatment. Of course, you have to check you first to ensure that you're healthy and fine, that you don't, don't have any underlying problems. The other thing will be your sperm quality, where I mentioned your normal form, you know, like morphology or movements, you know, like motility, concentration, number of sperms you have is less. So this may relate to other things like smoking, so you might have to take uh, multivitamins, antioxidants which I mentioned, ACE, zinc, uh, CoQ10, or just lose weight. All right, that will help you to improve your overall sperm uh, right. quality. Okay, how about and, uh, the causes are for female? Okay, female um, causes can be can be due to structural problems in the womb, for example fibroids, polyps, these are non-cancerous growths which make your womb very irregular, your inner lining of your womb, well, irregular and you are unable to, you know, uh, cause implantation of the, of the baby. Um, things, other things will be like uh, fallopian tubes are blocked due to previous infections or surgeries that you had, where you blocked your fallopian tubes, where when that happens, then the egg which ovulates cannot meet the sperm when it goes into the womb. Okay, and those kind of cases, you need to do things like IVF, where you call it test tube babies. Okay. Other things would be like the ovary, ovarian issue, where you have uh, cyst, um, you have uh, you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, okay, or it's called PCOS, quite uh, quite common, where these women they have uh, they don't have regular cycles, that like period will come once in three months, once in six months. Of course, they'll be happy that there's no period for three months, six months, but those are those one in those kind of situations, the eggs don't ovulate, so mm -hmm. they have end of this cycle. So hence, kalau they don't have ovulation, then then there's uh, the no chance for a baby. So um, that that's one issue. The other one would be like endometriosis, okay, 
where you have a uh, big uh, cyst inside your ovary with full of you know um uh, what is it chocolate kind of uh, uh thing that's why it's known as a uh, chocolate cyst okay content is uh, brown in color so those kind of issues also will impede or have difficulty for women to conceive and some women okay where um, they have something called um, vaginismus vaginismus is something which they have pain when they have intercourse so much of pain that they they have they they are distressed and they cannot have sex at all okay so these these are the issues where um, where women have um, that causes infertility in them Okay, doctor. This question, I think I saw a few times. Ada ramai orang tanya juga. Okay, um, uh, from Pak Hantes. Dia kata, Dara, doctor, I want to ask if I regularly get period pain, does it affect uh, kesuburan? Well, it all depends on what is your underlying issue. Okay, so. If you have right, uh, severe period pain, like need medication and all, you need to get that. Check. So what the doctors will do, will do an ultrasound scan to check your womb, check your uh, ovaries to look for things like fibroids, polyps. Or uh, you can check your um, your any ovarian cysts, like endometriotic cysts. All these things will be checked. You may have one of those problems, okay, and they will be easily treated. Okay, with uh, with medication or surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, but and if you don't have any problem, then then of course then the uh, you know regular um, like like painkillers also will be sufficient. Okay. So this is another question that I have not put together quite many. Okay. How to get uh, the gender of baby that we want? Okay. Is there a specific calculation for a natural conceiving? It's like. Contoh, I nak baby girl because I got three boys. Macam itulah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so basically, I think I think you can teach people lah uh, how to get baby boy. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, the thing is this. That's a myth. Everybody right. feels that uh, a different time of the day, a uh, different uh, you know, a full moon, half moon, okay, uh, and different oh. positions. Okay, all those things can you know can affect your gender of a child or different timing when you ovulate. You um, just want to ovulate. You uh, you have intercourse. You have in higher chance of getting a girl. Or when you do it later, get a boy. So uh, some people even talk about uh, different types of food. Like you know, you take vinegar or you take uh, salty food, or sweet food. Okay. Oh no, nothing works. It's all by chance. <laughs> It's all in God's hands, okay? All right, and uh, well, God decides of uh, what what kind of blessing you're going to get. Whether it's going to be a going to be a blessed with a boy or a girl. So whatever it is, it's uh, it's what you get. The only way for sure to decide uh, on gender is basically by doing a thing uh, a procedure called IVF, test tube right. babies, where we give injections for ten days. We take the eggs out. And then uh, we take. Then the husband gives his sperms, and we inject the sperms into the egg to fertilize the egg. Now those babies that we grow in the lab, we'll take out one small cell from those embryos and subject it to chromosome analysis. The procedure is called pre-implantation genetic testing. Okay, in that scenario, you can you in 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 part of the report you will have. All the chromosomes to make sure the baby doesn't have Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, Patel syndrome, all all the things, and also you will know the gender. So some people will insist that they want to know the gender of the baby. So we just give them a report; they can choose whichever baby they want to to transfer. But the whole procedure is generally done to ensure that the baby is healthy and to increase pregnancy chances. The gender thing is a it's a byproduct of the test. So yeah, so that's okay. the only way. To confirm whether it's a boy going to be a boy or girl, nothing else. All this food and full moon, half moon, <laughs> doesn't work. Hmm. Chinese calendar, tak leh percaya lah. Yes, cannot. It's all, all, all really doesn't work. Everything is fifty fifty. Okay. You follow that, fifty percent right. girl, fifty percent boy. <laughs> okay, doctor. Okay, now there's tons of ways to prevent this to happen, and 
Big babies. Uh, these are the two that I can think of right now and does it help to prevent? Iaitu a dietary advice ataupun medication and supplements. Boleh tak doktor bagi uh, your thoughts about this? I, um, dietary advice eh? I think the, hmm. the, the first part your question it went blur a bit. I didn't I couldn't hear the first part. Uh, there are tons of ways to prevent this to happen. Okay, prevention lah uh, to make babies. Ah, uh, macam cara untuk make babies ni uh, dietary advice dia atau uh, cara cara untuk kita jaga kita punya pemakanan. Boleh okay, basically advice dietary advice to improve your chances, is it? Yes. So the first dietary advice is have um, have healthy diet, not too much of fast food. Okay, yang you know our goreng goreng uh -huh. and our fast fast food and burgers and yeah, all. So you can you, you you can take it once in a while. Okay, in moderation, it's fine. The other thing okay. is all like uh, all these soft drinks and uh, all these sweet drinks like contains a lot of sugar. Okay, all these things have to be reduced too. And try your best to, like I mentioned, stop the sugar, reduce the carbs, reduce the rice, and uh, and all these colorful vegetables like green leafy vegetables, all these vegetables which are you know carrots and uh, like and also your fish, kind of the salmon, fish oils, and all those are also very good. One dietary one dietary uh, method that everyone speaks about is the Mediterranean diet. Okay, basically what is they they have there is like green or colorful vegetables and seafood okay so mm -hmm. by taking that kind of diet then of course you'll be much healthier you won't put on a lot of weight and uh, you, and it's uh, it's something which you can take to improve your overall uh, your chances for conception all right okay right? doctor um uh, another question uh this one is a uh, quick question yeah woman with pcos ataupun polycystic ovary syndrome yeah. Uh, are they able to conceive, Doctor? Oh yes, definitely, 100%. They definitely can conceive. But they just need mm -hmm. to have uh, proper advice. Number one, losing weight. Number two, they uh, they, they can take uh, some pills called Clomiphene Citrate. This is a pill called mm -hmm. Suboran. And we give it from, we mm -hmm. give it from the second to the sixth day of the cycle. These pills will help mm -hmm. them to grow their eggs. The next one will be injections they can take known as the follicular mm -hmm. stimulating hormone these injections they can take either alternate days or daily basis okay with the mm -hmm. with the doctor's advice and help to uh, to grow their eggs and some patients where they don't they don't uh, respond well to the chromin then we uh, we do some surgery called ovarian drilling where it's known as uh, laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery where we just puncture small small holes in the ovaries okay and those patients uh, will have uh, they, some of them get regular cycles and some of them even conceive within six months after the surgery and uh, failing which if they still don't conceive then they have to do an IVF test tube baby so in short yes P P with PCOS patients can definitely get pregnant because they got a lot of eggs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay all right, so uh, the next one, uh, can a woman with metastatic uh, metastatic breast cancer affect fertility? Yes, of course. Um, breast cancer is uh, something which um, is quite devastating to many women um, and those people have it. And um, the, treat the treatment will include surgery, um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. The chemotherapy and radiotherapy are the ones which will eventually um, destroy your ovarian reserve. So, um, in, in, so the treatment options for these women would be, number one, um, go ahead for their surgery, remove what they can, the cancer cells, mm -hmm. and then start a fertility treatment like, uh, like what we do in IVF. We give them uh, injections for 10 days, then we'll, we'll retrieve their eggs. And if they are married, then we will inject the eggs with the husband's sperms and create the babies to freeze the babies for future use that means the babies will be in the lab they can continue their their treatment their breast cancer treatment they do the surgery chemotherapy radiotherapy once they are totally clear from their from their cancer maybe in two years two three years uh, then they can transfer those embryos into their womb okay and get get pregnant okay however if they are like single um, not married yet 
and then what they can do is they can uh, do a procedure like IVF, 10 days of injection, and they can freeze their eggs for future use. So in that way, you do not, you can have your full uh, breast cancer treatment, okay, and you can also preserve your fertility for future. You know, so at least right. then uh, you don't have a problem. Okay, yeah, so we have done a number of cases like that. Hmm. Okay, uh, doctor, last, 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 last but not least. Okay, there's a yeah, many tell me. uh, ramai men sebenarnya yang tanya soalan ni. Um, soalan ni agak macam, agak macam. <laughs> Is masturbation affects fertility? Okay, now the myth, the, the myth is they say that if too much of masturbation eventually will affect fertility. I would say yes. You know why? You are masturbating and throwing the sperm down the drain. It's not supposed to be there. <laughs> it's supposed to be in the wrong, another place where you know you, you make babies. So by throwing it down the drain or a toilet bowl, it's not going to help you make you babies, you see? <laughs> right? <laughs> so so that's, that's number one. Number two, um, well, um, Masturbation generally, uh, well, it's uh, too much. Well, a lot of people do it when, when they are much younger, but eventually as you get older and older, I guess, uh, no, you know, you not want to do it. But uh, it does, masturbation itself does not reduce your fertility potential. It does not. Okay. But of course, if you want to get pregnant means then it's better not masturbate and better, you know, have intercourse properly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Other than, other than okay. wasting, wasting your sperms into the drain, don't waste it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's that's a really panic or a very uh, nerve wracking question to ask, doctor. But thank you so much for your answer. I guess all of the guys semua so macam dah tahu dah. Okay, the answer. And I think uh, all of the questions that we asked tonight also really answers all of your questions about the art of making babies okay yeah. thank you so much doctor so if you guys want to connect with doctor you guys can go to www.doctoroncall.com.my slash find dash doctor slash puchong slash doctor slash doctor dash navdi dash sing dash panu okay you guys can take note the kind comment below we will uh give the link over there to all the moms and dads here's to better parenting if you want to discuss any new topics okay a uh, new uh maybe doctor can uh come again okay give your thoughts yeah, sure. uh don't hmm. forget to tweet and hashtag to shopping life mine and hashtag to moms by moms take care be safe thank you so much doctor be safe doctor yeah i'll see you yeah, thank soon. you very much okay. Good night. Right. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.